Hello, Nana here. Welcome to the theory crafting and build demonstration video for the build I'll be playing in the Legacy League, and that's going to be a wild striking max block gladiator. Idea is to really turtle up with our gladiator part and use a wild strike to uh, basically set the screen on fire and ice and lightning. So, where we got a level 87 gladiator that I converted. Uh, most of the gear is not really uh, representative of what we'll be finding, of course, as a solo self-found. Uh, with the exception of the anvil, I'm really hoping I'm going to get uh, one of the new anvils. Because the plus 3 to maximum block is really nice for a max block uh, build. But if we don't get it, then any random rare is going to do as well. But it's an indication of, of how we could end up doing later on. And as a result, we'll... Uh, run a tier 11 corrupted precinct map with some, some magic monsters. Monsters have a high chance to avoid status ailments. And of course, because we're doing a lot of elemental damage that actually has some info influence on our damage output, they'll be critting a lot and they'll be doing double their damage is fire. So it's going to be a, just a, an average low tier red map. And I'll show you how the build works. At the end of this video, we're going to go into more details about skill trees and how I'm thinking of itemizing this. Uh, so of course, this is a, uh, a build concept. Okay, so enemies are doing quite some, some damage. That's uh, noticeable. So we are actually resisting things now. Chaos is still uh, not maxed, but our... Elemental resists are maxed with this build. But as I said, the gear is far from optimal because this really was a different character up until a few hours ago. So, there's a lot of uh, stuff going on. This is a rather visually impressive build, I like to think. Just lots of things. And that's of course because Wild Strike, we're using multi uh, multiple strikes, we're using faster attacks. And as such, we are performing, what is it, like five or six attacks per second. Which, of course, with multi strike, uh, basically means one click is three attacks and it takes about half a second. Wild Strike, no, the initial hit is gonna be one of the three elements at a random. And that has a secondary effect depending on the element chosen. Fire has a nice little fiery explosion that you see every once in a while. Cold shoots out a wave. And lightning has a nice arcing crackle that hits multiple targets. And the higher you level wild strike, the more impressive those attacks are going to be. Because you get more arcs, you get a, a, a larger AoE, etc. So, we're doing a lot of elemental damage in currently in patch 2.5. 60% of our damage is converted to the element. Um, in a couple of hours, once patch 2.6 goes live, we will get 100% elemental damage conversion. So, weapon elemental damage, for example, will suddenly affect 100% of your damage rather than only 60% of the damage. And as such, the build gains a lot of power. It just overnight, it's... The elemental damage portion is increased by two thirds. Some utility things we've got going on. I'm using Frenzy to actually manually charge up our Frenzy charges. The Frenzy skill is the only way that I know of where you can reliably get yourself Frenzy charges. Because most of the other things actually rely on you having to kill something. And of course, if you're in a boss fight, a lot of bosses don't have add-ons, so there's nothing to kill. Which makes it rather annoying to deal with. So for that, we picked up Frenzy. And it's uh, linked with uh, faster attacks and fortify and leap slam. So effectively, it's just linked in with our movement skills. Most of the time I've got movement skills as just a simple three link setup. But in this case we make it a four link by adding frenzy and suddenly we get a boatload of utility. 
which is nice. We're using Enduring Cry to build up our Endurance Charges, which is also rather useful to uh, tank. We have a, a Castman Damage Taken setup, which is not the, the typical level 1, 2 or 3 Castman Damage Taken, but we're actually leveling it along with ourselves. As such, it's only triggering every, I think, 2 or 3,000 uh, damage. So it's gonna trigger two or three times before we run out of health. Um, we have a fair bit of health regeneration and we, of course, as a duelist, we pick up the life leech nodes that we have, which, nope, because we are doing quite some damage, helps us stay alive. So, nope, it's gonna trigger three or four times uh, during the course of a fight, which helps us Oh, cast a monocle, but not too often, so we actually get to enjoy our endurance charges for a little bit, which helps. Then, of course, we have the uh, the monocle that, that kicks in if we're at full charges. It's gonna last for about two seconds, which is pretty useful. We have elemental weakness in that chain as well, and the idea there is that oh, against most mobs, you don't really have to curse them to adjust completely massacre them but if you're doing a boss fight then oh the boss is going to inflict a lot of damage and bosses are tough and they have elemental resistances so you use the uh, elemental weakness to pierce some of it i'm aware that bosses have a lot of resistances oh a demon tamer are you part of the bosses or are you just a random yeah it's just part of the bosses okay Let's uh, take things down a little bit slower. Yep, that's one, that's two. That's good. Who's next? Yeah, you. Oh, come on. Don't be coy. No, you got a, uh, your thing going on, but... Yes, you're dead. Righteous fire and then running away. That that feels counterproductive. She should be in my face trying to burn me. Well, as you see, oh, we're doing quite some damage, but we're also able to tank through quite some damage. That was basically why I picked the, the precinct for this little test run. So... Uh, let's see, we can just level these jumps up and let's go back to town. And then have a, a little bit of a chat about the rest of the build. So, just don't pay attention to the specifics of the items. We have Wild Strike as our main attack. Wild Strike, it scales up and as you see this is just a low level Wild Strike. Because this is a demonstration. The number one way to boost the damage of Wild Strike is by adding melee physical damage to it. That's by far the best way to improve its damage. So that's got to be the first link that you add to it. The second bonus is going to be weapon elemental damage. That's after physical scaling. This is the second best way to scale it. After this, you want to add multi strike. So that basically sets your four link. And so currently we're at 15k DPS. If you take it off, we're at 8k DPS. So then so you scale it further. We go to 11k, so 8 to 11. And then faster attacks takes us from 11 to 15k. So oh, the scaling, you really get benefit from that fifth and that sixth link. But we have uh, other ways to scale our damage. So if you have the five link, which oh, I'm going to play solo self found, I'll be counting on the five link. Uh, I'm hoping for a 6 link, but I'm counting on a 5 link. So the faster attacks, it's probably not going to be there. And we'll get 11k DPS with you know, just a random unique, which is actually worse than a well-crafted rare, or even an, an average crafted rare. Um, so yeah, that's our main attack. Then for our movement, we have Leap Slam with faster attacks. And we got Frenzy and Fortify. It's all part of the same chain. So you can jump around quickly. And we can do some frenzying to build up our Frenzy charges. 
So we can guarantee that we always have our maximum frenzy charges up in fights where we need it. Because frenzy charges, they do add a bunch of damage to us. So that's that part. Then a little bit of a defensive setup. We got Vengeance, we got Reckoning, we got Life on Hit, and we have melee physical damage. This is just a way for... Oh, we are going to be max block or near max block, depending on our, what our gear allows. So really benefiting from just doing a damage back and especially if you get surrounded think of for example breaches or other similarly really high intensity high mob count areas if it's gonna trigger you're gonna hit a lot of enemies and you're gonna get a lot of life in return so that is really nice also synergizes nicely uh with no something like the amulet of the the uh the anvil that will also get your life on a block. Then some more utility. We have Endurance Cry. That gets us our Endurance Charges. Then we have Hatred to boost our damage output. It's no formally nothing special. And we have a Decoy Totem. So if we get into uh, crazy situations. Oh, that was silly. If we get into slightly crazy situations, we can just put up a Duke Totem to distract enemies away from us. So we can reposition and then just jump back in. It's as it's good as a panic thing. Ooh, see, I'm really... I've, I've been just theory crafting and working on my build guide until the latest moment, as you can see. And let's see, so that's the Decoy Totem. On the other side, we have another Cosmo Damage Taken setup. This is going to be a lower level one. And the main reason for that is because we want to trigger Tempest Shield. And we want to trigger it rather often to make sure that it's effectively always up. Because we get 3% block chance from this. And a little bit of lightning retaliation. And we got Herald of Ash in here as well. Because it needed to go somewhere. It boosts our damage output. And the overkill causes Ignite. And because we're not doing large atta wave attacks... It's uh, it's gonna help a bit, especially because Wild Strike itself, the core attack is gonna be focused on a single enemy, but we're doing a rather high damage there, so it works. And our Cosmo Damage Taken setup, this is the one that just levels along with us. The, currently we got a bit of a mishmash of gems in here. We got our Stone Golem in here. I tried it with a manually cast Golem, but in a build that doesn't really support its minions, Golems tend to die rather quickly. So we got it on Cosmo Damage Taken setup. So if we get hit quite a bit, our Golem is going to pop back up and help us regenerate some of our life. Then we got Elemental Weakness in here to curse some bosses. And finally, we have Immortal Call, which is arguably the number one reason why you actually run the Cosmo Damage Taken setup in the first place. And as I said before, we have a high level Cosmo Damage Taken setup. So we can have a higher level Immortal Call. It's going to trigger less often, but the buff duration per Endurance Charge modifier scales up for Immortal Call. And because we are actively using Enduring Cry to get our Endurance Charges up, most of the time when this triggers, we will have three or four charges up and we're going to consume them. And the Immortal Call is going to last for two seconds rather than 0 0.4 seconds. So rather, rather helpful i considered going with unset rings for the two auras because the unset rings have a, a change where they can get a, a modifier of pl uh, plus two or plus three to the socketed gem which is nice for the auras but it was pretty difficult to make it work out with resistances so for now i'm gonna go with a conservative approach and use the rings to fix resistances and things like that and maybe if we get into a very luxurious situation where we have a lot of resists we can always go back to unset rings and move some gems around and see what else we can throw into the sockets because there's always more things that you can socket in terms of gear i'm gonna spec into Strength. Let's actually switch to uh, path of building here. So we have path of building here, and yeah, we have the entire overview of the skill tree. So this is um, a level 
71 so as we would be starting on white maps this is the skill tree as we would have it so we start as a, a duelist we work our way down we grab the the usual no some life notes some uh, ignore movement penalties notes also gets us some decks and some accuracy and some attack speed we take defiance uh no for some extra block chance we go down here golem's blood sweet sweet life and regen and then down here uh, testudo and retaliation that concludes that one and then we grab the a vitality void and there's going to be a little bit of life um, of mana leech in here and that's going to be enough to sustain a uh, six linked wild strike so this is actually rather nice oh, optionally we have another life leech up here that we can pick up if need be but uh, for now i think this is going to work out rather well well as i said this is a theory craft with a bit of a build demonstration in the end, we're going to be playing the build and we will see what the needs of the build are as the build progresses. So once we're down, uh, done in this area, we're going to go west. We grab these uh, decks and int nodes because it's really easy for us to get strength nodes because we will be in the Marauder and Templar area. But we do have some gems that require int and we have some gems that require decks. And ideally, we want to get 155 in both. So index and intelligence and with strength currently the indication is going to go at least into the 400s including some from gear. Um, intelligence you want to at least have uh, 60 points or so so you can actually equip uh, elemental weakness. All extra points are just for scaling it up further so if you can't get more than 100 or 120 it just limits the maximum level of uh, of the elemental weakness that you could get so it's no no big deal to not get too much but this really helps out early on similarly for decks we want to scale it to about 150 and then no gear will carry us a little bit further just to be able to uh, level up all our uh, dex based gems so we're gonna go here grab some some uh some stats Bloodless here for some, some nice life early on. Actually, I can switch to uh, an earlier profile. So now by the time we finish normal, the idea is to be about there. Now you get this for some life. Over here, Soul of Steel is slightly optimized. So you get some more elemental resistance from it and 4% physical damage reduction. You just get that one for free. So that's a nice one to grab. Soli uh, solidity here for some, some block chance. Once we have that one, then no, by the time we've finished Cruel, we no, pick up Diamond Skin. It's a really nice way to just get 45 uh, points of resistances for a, a single point. That is really efficient. Uh, a bunch of life and some regen and some armor in the Marauder area. Versatility gets us some decks, some decks and some intelligence. Really, really useful. And then we're going to go up, Born to Fight, some, uh, some damage boosting. A whole bunch of travel notes to the Templar area. We'll get uh, Sanctify, we'll get Precision, Discipline and Training again for some more life. And Retribution up here. The melee damage and the attack speed and the strength and int are all really, really nice to have. So Retribution is a really nice skill for, for this build. So that takes us to about the end of Cruel. If we just have a uh, quick look at our skill tree. Because the end of Cruel is or at, at our Ascendancy. I'm going to go Gladiator. It's, it's actually one of my favorite Ascendancies. So might not be surprised by that. For normal, we'll pick Painforged. So we got some, some block uh, stuff here. And if you've been hit, you get a 8% additional block chance. If you haven't been hit recently, you simply get 40% increased damage. So no, you open up a fight with extra damage. And then once the enemy starts hitting you in return, you can simply turtle up. It's really nice and versatile. And of course, if you hit hard enough that they actually can't do anything to you, then that's even better. Especially because our block chance is going to be pretty high. As long as we keep blocking attacks, we're not taking damage. So then it, we actually keep our offensive bonus. So this, I really like the design of this, uh, of this uh, notable. 
On Cruel, we will grab a versatile combatant. All of our block chance also applies to spells. So that is one of the, the, the real keys to this build. Because if we you know, get 70 plus percent chance to block with uh, attacks, we also get it for spells. And therefore, we get a massive defensive bonus. For Merciless, we're going to grab a Violent Retaliation. Which is actually pretty cool, because for every time you get hit in the last 4 seconds, you're going to get a stacking damage bonus that in your average low tier red map, you're going to get hit 10-15 times in 4 seconds. So that's going to be 80-120% to increased physical damage. A lot of the damage scaling of this build is already built into just a single notable. Really, really nice. And... Oh... If you do the end, uh, end game uh, uh, labyrinth, oh, then you got the choice between outmatch and outlast. Get some frenzy and endurance charges with kills, which is potentially useful, especially if you're maxed out. You get either a more damage multiplier or a reduced damage taken. Which no, because we are controlling both of the types of charges, it actually works rather well for us. Alternatively, we have gratuitous violence up here. Get a chance to cause bleeding. Uh, you do extra damage against bleeding enemies, and bleeding enemies explode. But because all of our damage is converted, or at least all of our wild strike damage is converted to elemental damage, we are not actually doing any bleeding damage with that. But we do have enough other triggers going on that I think we should be able to keep this going rather reliably. And of course, enemies that bleed explode, and then they'll... Uh, do some more damage so that uh, oh, they're both okay enough to pick doesn't really matter but you know, you first actually have to do the end game labyrinth for that so once we are done with cruel we're gonna advance to the merciless and effectively what we do is we grab the sign a life wheel and we go up here we get catalyze 24 percent increased elemental damage with weapons and at 10 percent to or 10 to strength and intelligence it's just a really efficient node and then we grab devotion with the extra alive bit at the end this gets us to over 186 percent life from the tree and even with just averagely rolled rares you should exceed 5000 life at that point so once we start leveling towards yellow maps we're gonna go for sanctuary just Increase our block chance a bit further. Increase uh, our defense from the shield. And we're going to go for a big tower shield. So that just gets us a lot more armor. And we get a little bit. Well, actually we get a decent amount. 12% elemental resistances. While holding a shield. And down here we got combat stamina. For some life regeneration. And some armor. And a little bit of life. So. Nope. Oh. You're going from yellow to uh, from white to yellow maps. You get some some extra resistances. They just help you deal with uh, elemental weakness maps uh, a bit easier. So you have to overcap your resists a little bit less. And now this is basically level 79. So then the next step, uh, aiming towards level 87, we got shaper here for some more life regen. We got a couple of extra life notes, a uh, life armor notes over here. A little bit of life armor over here. And no, if you want, you can also grab these two to get another 16% elemental resistances. It really depends on how gearing goes. So that is the nice thing. There's a lot of utility nodes that just surround our main tree that you can pick based on what your build needs. And then now for the end game, no, targeting more towards level 96. Down here you got endurance charges and you got some life regen from endurance charges here is some more regen alternatively of course we mostly skipped the uh, charges there is a frenzy charge down here that you can get with two points there is an endurance charge that you can get here with two points so especially towards the end game based on what the build needs at that point in time we can pick one or the other nodes and deviate from the path after all, this is just theory crafting. This is just speculating on what we're gonna do. So, 
let's have a quick look at a possible item setup. I've been playing around a little bit here in Path of a Building. And what I come up with is if you pick a rare, I've also all named them ideal 50%. The ideal is if you get the quote unquote ideal prefixes and suffixes on your gear. And the 50% is if they are come at 50% of their possible maximum value. It seems a decent balance for if no, you, you might get a 90% perfect roll on one item and then you might not get the roll on another one. But in total, it's going to all balance out to 50%. That's the thinking behind it, at least. So for our weapon, I'm going to go with a mace. Um, picked a, vo a Void Scepter here. It's a pretty high-end mace, 40% increased elemental damage. You also have uh, the Sembar Scepter, Sembar Mace, something like that, which has 6% elemental damage pe uh, penetration. That's also pretty cool because it allows us to ignore resist on, um, on bosses. And bosses are by far the trickiest thing to deal with because of their resistances. It is useful to have a high amount of increased physical damage on your weapon combined with a high amount of flat physical damage. And there is another modifier that adds a low amount of percentage of physical damage as well as a low amount of accuracy. So this is not four prefixes, the 40% and the accuracy. It's actually built into the same modifier. This would be by far the most ideal set of prefixes you could get. In practice, no, you're going to get probably two out of three and you're still going to be pretty happy with it, especially if the rolls are going to be on the higher end of the spectrum. For suffixes, attack speed is nice to get. Accuracy is pretty important to get because we are not going for resolute technique because with resolute technique, yes, you always hit, but you cannot crit. And because all of our damage is going to be elemental damage of some sort, it really felt useful to keep our critting options in there. And though even if we're critting at 5 or 6% chance, we're attacking 5 or 6 times per second, and we do a lot of AoE attacks. So the chances of actually critting against monsters are pretty decent if you just consider the overall big picture. And then of course we have a chance to ignite things, to freeze things, and to shock things. And especially if we happen to shock something with our lightning damage, of course that means they'll be taking 50% more damage from all other attacks afterwards, which is pretty cool. So therefore increasing your crit chance with the suffix is going to be useful as well so that's a weapon just any type of mace the reason i'm going for a mace is because they are slow and they hit quite hard for a single-handed weapon we'll have to see how the uh, changes to the one-handed weapons shake out because we only know that they're all going to be buffed but we don't know by how much so in practice we will have to see I don't think any of the skills that we use actually requires a specific weapon type. Uh, for example, if you want to use whirling blades, you need to have a bladed weapon, so you cannot use it if you're wielding a, a scepter, for example. But with Leap Slam, you're pretty much open for everything. A tower shield, increased armor, flat armor, and some life. Those are the ideal prefixes. A tower shield with 1100 armor is pretty pitiful. You can oh, easily get them to 1700, 1800. So as I say, this is really ideal mods, but really conservative on the values to get an indication for if we just get a random bunch of rares by the end game, how are we likely to do? For the suffixes, a bonus to all elemental resists, a bonus to the block chance. You probably want to see that you get the maximum value for this. 5% so you get a 30% chance to block. Now all the little bits they stack up. And nope, strength could also be dex or int, uh, whatever you want, or maybe you want a single resistance. In this case, I felt no, let's uh, roll the strength. Actually, if we have chaos on here, then we can max out our chaos. But well, as I say, it's an indication for our body armor. It's going to be armor, armor, and life. And we get uh, resistances and uh, maybe a stat as a suffix. 
And that, that's basically the theme for most of our gear. Skill armor, skill life. Uh, helmets can get accuracy, so that's a special modifier to look for on helmets. And for the rest, uh, go for resist. If you can get chaos somewhere, go for chaos because it's pretty difficult to get chaos from anything besides your gear, so you really need to focus on it. Gloves, they can scale accuracy, they also can scale attack speed. So it might be that your glove is going to be slightly more aggressively tuned than some of your other items. And for the, the prefixes, no skill armor, skill life, it's all good. Boots, movement speed, um, see if you can go for 30%. Um, and then now for the rest, just do some armor, some life. And suffixes are just for resistances. Belts, you can roll armor on a belt, which is pretty useful. Can increase, uh, roll, increase elemental weapon damage on a belt. That's also pretty darn useful. And for the rest, now some life, some resist, some stats. Yada yada. For the rings, any sort of resistance ring works. I just picked prismatic here to give a bit of an average view. But technically, the two stone rings are more efficient because at the top end, they give 16% to two resists, so you get 32 points in total. While a prismatic at the top end only gives 10% to all three resists, which is 30%. So you're losing out on two resistance points. Downside, of course, of the two stones is you have to balance two resistances and the third resistance is always going to be missing out. So for the prefixes, you want to add physical damage just to keep scaling your damage. Uh, weapon elemental damage is something you can get on a ring and now for the rest, life is useful. And for the suffixes, you can get accuracy, which is pretty darn useful and resistances as required. The other ring, effectively a copy of the other one but with different resists in order to balance things out. For the amulet, I really would like to get the anvil just because it increases your max chance to, uh, to block. The penalty of 10% uh, movement speed is gone. So in 2.6, you will actually just be at, uh, walking as fast as you always were. There is an uh, attack speed penalty. But I think we are, were attacking plenty fast in the demo. So we should be fine there. And uh, reflecting some physical uh, damage to attackers is also pretty nice. For flasks. Oh, uh, the panicked eternal flask is pretty good for just uh, regenerating some life uh, as needed. No, you want to get bleeding fixing. You want to get burning fixing. You want to get some form of curse removal. A uh, sofa flask is pretty nice. It uh, gives you some damage. Consecrated ground, of course, gives you 4% life regen per second. So that just helps you sustain during tough fights. Now this is for those stand and fight kinds of moments. Uh, Quicksilver flask. Um, oh, I'd like to move fast and it's a nice combination for freeze removal. And I'm going to experiment with a Onslaught Flask. Onslaught it increases your, your attack and movement speed by 20%. So that's a, a nice damage bonus. And with Iron Skin to scale our armor. And no, nope, armor is currently listed at 18,000. Uh, that is just for top tier items with some bonuses. That does not include any of the other modifiers, but it does include uh, skill bonuses, but I don't think we really have some. So 18,000 probably on the low end. Yeah, I'm thinking it's going to be 20, 25,000. That probably seems more reasonable as an expectation, especially because we are scaling quite some stats on our shield. And if uh, the shield is currently 11, 000, uh, 1,100 armor, if you get that to 1,700, we're easily going to get a couple thousand more points of armor on top of that. And no armor, it helps you deal with weak blows. It doesn't protect you from the blows that would kill you. But no, it's, uh, it's all the little bits they help. And especially if we have all of our endurance charges up, that's going to be you now three or four endurance charges. Um, that's 12 to 16% physical uh, resistance 
we get another uh, 4% from Soul of Steel down here. So oh, we'll be reducing all uh, physical damage by 20%. Then armor kicks in. That's going to reduce it by even more. And we're leeching quite some life and we're regenerating. So, And of course, we are blocking a lot of attacks and spells. And therefore, if we get hit by a large hit, oh, we have a large chance of actually blocking it. And if not... It's going to hit us, but then subsequent attacks or things have a high chance of getting blocked again. So because of the high block, we have a pretty good chance of actually using our leech and our regen in between and getting hit to recover our life and stay relatively stable. So with that, I think I'm done talking for the theory crafting portion of this build. I will be playing this build as... Uh, I'm actually gonna stream my start of this build in a couple of hours. <laughs> um, so that's gonna be at the launch evening for the Legacy League. So if you wanna watch twitch.tv slash Nanach, I'll be streaming throughout the weekend. I'll also be posting recap videos of the progress that I make during the initial weekend to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Nanach. And after the launch weekend, I'm going to go back to my regular Let's Play format and I'll be posting an episode every day. If all things go according to plan, we might actually start mapping after launch weekend, but that might be a little bit ambitious. We'll see how things go. So with that, I'm going to thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again next time. Bye bye.